Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everybody. On air. Merci. Thank you. I come to you with honor and respect. I respect your cause, and I'm honored that you're here today. My name is Bob McGuire. I am director of a couple of things here at the George Washington University Elliott School, including the um, Latin American and Hemispheric Studies program and an initiative we have within that program called Focus on Haiti. Um, I've been asked to be kind of the warm-up speaker. You know, when they have a big concert, they bring in the big names, but first they bring in someone to warm up the audience. This is my job today, so let me try to warm you up a little bit. Um, I was quite interested to see that this conference is named after a Haitian proverb. Kai coule trompe sole, mais li paka trompe la pluie. A leaky roof can fool the sun, but it cannot fool the rain. Oh. Can you see me better now without the reflections? And so on? OK. Um, you know, Haitian proverbs have a literal meaning, and that meaning is very literal in that proverb, and also a figurative meaning. When I take this proverb's uh, figurative meaning, a leaky roof can fool the sun, but it cannot fool the rain, I'm thought of an American, uh, I'm coming to think of an American saying, that you can fool some of the people some of the time, but not all the people all of the time. Or in other words, just to break that down to two words, get real. So it's time for us to get real and address Haiti's housing crisis. Proverbs have played a huge role in helping me gain an understanding of Haiti and explaining Haiti to others over the many years I've worked on Haiti. One of my favorite books, which I brought in this morning from my collection at home, is called 3,333 Proverbs in Haitian Creole, the 11th Romance Language. And this is volume one. The author is a man named Fayo. I have no idea who he is. There's no publication date in this book. But I can tell you that I bought this book in Port-au-Prince in March of 1985 for 100 gourds. Now that was when 100 gourds meant something. In those days, 100 gourds was $20 US. There's another book I pulled from my shelf last night, Parole Grand Moon, 999 Haitian Proverbs in Creole and English by Edinger Gentil and O. Carl Brown. This book was first published in 1976. This is a second edition published in 1996 it's very accessible, and it uses the now standard Creole orthography. The proverb entitling this meeting appears in both of these books. In fact, um, two variants of that proverb appear in this one. Let me share another proverb with you and see if there's anyone in here who's ever heard of it. Barik chargé pas campé. Uh, a few of you old timers remember that. It means the loaded donkey does not stand still. This proverb was cited by a US ambassador when he arrived in Haiti in 1988, and the country was thrashing about trying to reach a situation of having democratic elections. That ambassador was named Al Adams, but no one in Haiti knew his name. They all called him Ambassador Bouik Chargé the loaded donkey. <laughs> he used that proverb to try to push and promote the fact that the military regime was holding up elections, and he equated those elections to a loaded donkey, and the Haitian people to a loaded donkey. They wanted elections, don't stand still, move forward. The Haitian military rewarded him with his use of a proverb by refusing to accept his credentials for a week or so, keeping his, cooling his heels, while they notably 
welcomed the Taiwanese delegation, which offered them money. There's a little background to the story. How did Ambassador Adams end up in Port-au-Prince on his welcoming day there saying this proverb? I must say I played a small role in that. For many years, I led a seminar at the Foreign Service Institute where State Department officials are trained for their um, overseas work. And I ran the uh, Haiti Area Studies class. Ambassador Adams was in my class. I was talking about proverbs. I was giving some examples. And he said to me, that's really interesting. Can I learn some more proverbs? I said, sure, check out this book. And he did. So he went on when he got to Haiti to use other proverbs, including when he famously engaged in a high profile proverb exchange with President-elect Jean-Bertrand Aristide in late 1990. After Aristide was elected, Ambassador Adams famously threw out a proverb like this. It says, après bala tambouloud. <laughs> After the dance, the drum is heavy, implying that the election was the dance, you've won. Now the responsibility of governing will be the heavy part. President-elect Aristide responded, mais en pire chai par Many hands together and it makes the load light. So that was his response to Ambassador Adams' proverb. An American anthropologist now at Notre Dame University, Karen Richmond, wrote a wonderful article about this exchange of points between the ambassador and the president, competing points. This would have been a lot of fun if it had not been for the very sad outcome of the violent coup against Jean Bertrand and Aristide and the terrible setback Haiti suffered in its quest to establish democratic governance, rule of law, and an end to impunity. I argue that Haiti is still immersed in this very difficult quest, particularly in view of the political developments over the past several years. As I mentioned earlier, proverbs have played a critical role in my understanding of Haiti. And I want to acknowledge someone who brought Proverbs to my attention very early on in my Haiti tenure, who is sitting with us today, and that's Claudette Worley, former Prime Minister and also former Director of Caritas Haiti. I especially remember having learned an important proverb from her. Roche n'en glo, pas qu'on en misère, roche n'en soleil. That means the rocks in the water do not understand the misery of the rocks in the sun. Now again, all proverbs, a literal meaning and a figurative one. And the figurative one is, it was time for Haiti to expand its opportunities so that all people of Haiti had opportunities and not just the privileged few. Sadly, the privileged few saw this proverb as a threat to them because of their zero-sum game mentalities. Allow me to, on this occasion to share a few of my favorite proverbs I've learned over the years with you, particularly as I believe they hold important meaning for both Haiti and for the deliberations that will be undertaken in this conference. Could you uh, please bring that slide up on the screen? And as we're getting the slide for these proverbs, I want to acknowledge that um, I consulted profusely with a book by Professor Albert Waldman. Um, who um, his Haitian Creole English Bilingual Dictionary for spelling and accentuation. So we'll get a list, here they come. Okay, can, okay, fine, let's take them one at a time. The one on the top, the rocks in the water don't know the misery of the rocks in the sun. I've mentioned that one already. And after that is probably the most common proverb in Haiti. I think that all journalists, when they go to Haiti, after they write in the first paragraph of their story, um, Haiti's last name, which um, we know is Haiti, comma, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, and Haiti, the only country with a last name. After they've written that, then inevitably, toward the end of their first article, they cite this proverb, derrière mon gamon, behind the mountains are more mountains. Again, a literal meaning. Haiti's an extremely mountainous country, and if you're walking around in Haiti and you climb over one hill or mountain and you think you've made it, 
guess what? There's another one in front of you. But that figurative meaning is important as well because Haitians often feel that once they overcome one obstacle, another one is right behind it. In 2009, Haiti had the most robust economic growth in the Caribbean. It looked like, the Haiti, it looked like Haiti was finally taking off. That mountain had been climbed. And then January 12th, 2010, the earthquake. The next proverb, analphabet pa bet, a play on the word bet, which means stupid. The proverb can be translated as just because you can't read doesn't mean you're stupid. Oftentimes in Haiti, the voices of poor people are not listened to or consulted when planning the future of their lives. And because people say, well, they're, they're poor people. They don't know how to read. They don't have anything to tell us. They don't have anything to say. We don't learn anything from them. Au contraire, mes amis. The first thing you should do if you're working in Haiti is to consult Haiti's poor people who live these problems on a day-to-day -day basis and can help you as an outsider or you as a member of the political class to understand these problems. Next proverb. Barik Tabai Shwal Gaonin. The mule works so the ponies can frolic. This is a proverb that I found used very frequently by Haitian poor people when I was working with them and through their organizations in my 19 years with the Inter-American Foundation in Haiti. Poor people do the work. Where do the benefits accrue? They don't accrue with poor people. They accrue with people along the way who have become very adept at siphoning off resources, at accumulating resources, and making sure that those who do the work do not get the benefits of that work. Let's look at the next one. Constitution c'est papier, bonnet c'est faire. This, constitu this uh, proverb has been used frequently in the history of Haiti, particularly when Haiti had an army. As we know, Haiti today has an army, but it's an army that has largely been disbanded in 2005 when the Haitian army was disbanded to comprise only a 42-member marching band. There are some who would like to restore the army. I would have a, an important reflection on this proverb in answering the question of whether Haiti needs an army or not. As the proverb said, the Constitution is made of paper, but the bayonet is made of steel. Steel that can be above the rule of law and that can act with impunity. This has been a very important proverb throughout the history of Haiti. The next one on my list, I'm getting close to the end. Shak moon rive ak moon pal. Everyone comes with his own friends. One of the things we've seen repeatedly in Haiti, particularly in its attempted transition from authoritarian rule to democratic governance is that people don't want to share power. It's a winner-take-all society. And when you win, you come with your friends and you ignore the fact that there are others with experience, with ideas, who you could work with, who you could collaborate with. Sadly, I think this proverb is very much in evidence today. The next one, which I think is perhaps the most important of all. Bai ku blie pote mac songe. He who strikes the blows forgets, who carries the scar remembers. Haitians often use this proverb in thinking about not just their history, but their present situation. For example, Haiti in historical times supported Simon Bolivar when he was in stress and had to flee South America and come to Haiti for asylum. The Haitians said, 
the quid pro quo is when you win your independence, abolish slavery. To make a long story short, that did not happen. And then when Haiti was trying to have Bolivar include them in the first hemispheric conference of the Americas in 1822, Bolivar caved in to the wishes of Washington, which could not sit in the same room with representatives of the first black republic of the world at that time. And Bolivar took the side of Washington and Haiti was excluded from that conference. Haiti took the blow. South America and North America gave Haiti the blow. And then in the late 1990s, when the Panamanians were hosting the General Assembly of the OAS in Panama and wanted to use the same building that this meeting in 1822 was held in, the Haitian delegation said, we're sorry, we are not setting foot inside that building. We were not invited in 1822 and we will not go in that building now. That is a manifestation of this proverb. Those who gave the blow in 1822 forgot. Those who carried the scar remembered and refused to go into that building. And the same is true today, I would venture to say, among those whose families, friends, and associates were tortured, arrested, beaten, and killed under the Duvalier dictatorship. By coublier, pote mac songer. And lastly, a proverb that I got from a friend of mine named Paul Farmer. Lave main sire à terre. It's like washing your hands and drying them in the dirt. Farmer tells a very interesting story related to this proverb. At his hospital in near Mir Ballet, he says, I treat people for tuberculosis. They come to me, I can treat them, I can cure them. I send them home to the same circumstances in which they got the disease without any change in that circumstance. They get the disease again. Me treating these people for tuberculosis is akin to this proverb. It's like washing my hands and drying them in the dirt. I think we could extend this maybe a little broadly and say that if you don't treat the root of the problem, you are wasting your time. No more Band-Aids on wounds. Let's treat the condition that causes the wound. Well, I hope you have found these proverbs to be of some interest. Um, when Jasmine Huggins asked me to provide opening comments, I was initially reluctant because as I told her, among the issues I follow in Haiti and hadn't have been involved with housing is really not one of them. I do much more political analysis and development analysis. But as I reflected on housing, several flashbacks from my own experiences in Haiti crossed my mind and reminded me of housing. It reminded me that housing, like the Proverbs, has played an instrumental role in helping me understand Haiti and its people. Let me cite a few examples. How about this one? Coupe tete boule kai. Recognize that? This was Dessalines, not proverb, but Dessalines' charge is battle cry. Cut their heads and burn their houses. Very important in Haiti's history and in understanding Haiti's history and including housing. In 1974, on my first visit to Haiti, I met a man up in the hillside near First Sea building his home block by cinder block. He explained to me he had been building it for six years and the cinder blocks were about this high. He said, maybe in about 10 years, I'll have enough resources and enough money to be able to build my entire house. Very important housing. I wonder whatever happened to that gentleman and his house, I really don't know. That was a long time ago. In 1978, as I began my important research in Haiti on bottom-up development issues, and I spent a lot of time in the northern area of Le Boyne, I came to learn that there was a whole cluster of houses in the Le Boyne area 
that were called Tikai Nassau, Nassau houses. What were these Nassau houses? These were houses, you could see them. You could say, that's one, that's one, and that's one. What did they have in common? These are houses where people who were receiving remittances from family who had gone to build the infrastructure of the Bahamian tourism industry in the 1970s and were sending back remittances the first time that Haiti really received remittances. These were houses that were improved through those remittances to have cinder block and to have toll, um, galvanized roofing. These were the Tikai Nassau. And it showed me the quest inherent within people to want to improve their lives through improving their housing. In 1994, I was fortunate to be able to host to Washington a group of artisans from Haiti for the Smithsonian Folklife Festival. Simple Haitians coming to Washington, enthralled by this city, but even more enthralled when I invited them to my home for an American-style cookout. They were so happy to have an opportunity to come to the Kai of a Blanc. Housing, very, very important. And there's a myriad of stories that I could tell. I'm running out of time. So let me just tell one more housing-related story that I think brings us more to the present. In 2013, on a visit to Haiti, I noticed on the hillsides of an area called Jalousie that all the houses had been painted in this pastel coloration. I thought, oh, that's very interesting. And as I learned more, I began to view this as a travesty that places form over substance, literally creating a pretty picture for people staying in luxury hotels while only being a facade of change that fails to address the underlying issues of the poverty of the people who inhabit those homes and their miserable conditions without electricity, clean water, sanitation, access to schools, jobs, and public safety. Over the weekend, I researched my book here to see what other housing-related proverbs there were, and I found two to share with you. One of them reminded me of how Haitians were congratulated by so many after the earthquake for their resiliency. And that was, the house can burn down, but you'll always have the land. Yes, resiliency, congratulating Haitians for resiliency. This may work for a while, but resiliency is not, at least should not be viewed as an end state. Like that challenge of rebuilding a home on land that remains after a house fire, resiliency is a condition from which resources and opportunities are required to move beyond. I felt this way very much in the months after the earthquake to say that let's stop congratulating resiliency, let's acknowledge it, and let's find ways to move effectively with Haiti's people so they can move beyond resiliency as an end state. And several other proverbs of the 3,333 3, revolved around ideas that others' homes are not yours and you should treat them as such and not overstay your welcome. Here's an example. Kai lezot pa kai tout moon. Or as the author elaborates here, other people's houses do not belong to the whole world, so if you are invited, Please keep out. As true as that might be, I think it's a bit harsh for us today. So as I conclude, allow me once again to welcome you to George Washington University and the Elliott School of International Affairs. Everyone, everyone among us is certainly invited to stay with us all day in our house and to make this house your house. Thank you for this opportunity to share some thoughts with you and as you proceed with today's conference, all the best for a vigorous and clear discussion, strong analytics, and workable solutions to address Haiti's compelling 
housing-related issues. Merci, Ampil.